as there's huge demand of python in the market let's learn python we have three things in today's agenda which are who can learn python prerequisites to python basic introduction to enter into python world so prerequisites meaning is that what all do you need before learning python so who can learn python now for example if someone know c c++ java c sharp or dotnet or etc languages then knowing either of them makes python very easy to learn okay so in this case the languages that you know already become the te it's like the syllabus of 10th standard whereas python syllabus is like lkg uh, syllabus okay uh it's that easy then people who do, people who do not know these programming languages can learn python more easily why because they will not have any confusion okay so it becomes like a play school syllabus hmm? uh why basically because when you know some concepts already and then you go to learn new concepts then it becomes very difficult sort of to understand something that's related new and little different okay so that causes confusion so it's better if you learn python as your first language as your first programming language it's in fact being taught in schools these days as the first programming language to get started okay so now what is the prerequisite to it and it's very interesting because the prerequisite is knowing and understanding reading basics of english okay so we need to have a basic understanding of understanding of english basically so what is python okay uh, python is a programming language like how we have english hindi chinese etc languages to communicate between two people similarly we need a language to instruct the machines to make them do what we want them to do okay so for example take a take an atm machine where we insert our atm card enter our password so what once we enter our password and we enter the amount that we need all these process is done internally uh, using the code that it already has and then then we can withdraw our cash okay so all that is taken internally and but how does that atm machine work that's uh, that is uh, when we write a code and we tell atm machine what is to be done the atm do, uh, the atm does what we want it to do okay now second point is python is a high level programming language okay so here by mistake i wrote level now there we have two different types of uh two levels of programming language which is high level and low level okay so low level programming languages are machine friendly languages they are not friendly to uh programmers programmers okay so they are understood mainly by machines and they are not used widely now high level programming languages are used widely why because they are a uh, programmer friendly okay so uh, python is one of them okay now uh, python is a general pro uh, purpose programming language as uh, we see it is used to develop desktop applications stand which uh, which is called stand alone application for example the calculator that ha that you have on your laptops or mobile phones okay so that run on a single machine you do not do not uh, need to uh, you do not need to interact with anybody else whereas the second type of applications we have is web applications for example facebook gmail okay for web applications we need two computer systems so um in one uh, we have the client machine and the other one is the server machine now what are these two so suppose if i open my web browser and i type gmail.com okay so what will happen is whatever uh i whatever i have typed that is gmail so uh, a request from the browser will be sent to this 
server machine where all the gmail data is stored okay now once it receives the request it will send a response in which i will have all my emails okay so my system is the client machine and the system where all the uh, gmail data is stored is the server machine okay so we have this request response system also python is used in iot's and uh, data science as well uh, we will see these terms in future and um, now why is it called a general pur purpose uh, programming language because we can create multiple application types as i just discussed okay now who developed python language guido van rossum it's a dutch name uh, he developed it in 1989 while working at national research institute at netherlands in 1991 20th of feb okay so uh, it was like uh, released in 1991 whereas they started it in 1989 hmm? now how much time do we take to learn python so we usually require two to three uh, months uh, for the basic python and uh, if we want to go ahead with either data science or the django framework it's a framework of python so it takes another two to three months so you can consider around six months hmm? now uh, so we have four basic points that is uh, it's uh, python is a general purpose programming language it's high level programming language it is created by hero van rossum and date of birth of the programming uh, of python is 1991 now why is python more popular than java because it's very easy to write and uh, the code is concise which means uh, concise uh, code means that it has very less code as compared to other languages that is you know uh, if you have 10 lines or uh, 7 lines of code then the same can be done uh, the same work can be done in one line of code so that's the beauty of python and uh, i'll just give you an example so here i have the java code and here i have the python code for just printing hello world onto the screen hmm? so we write class hello world uh, psvm is nothing but public static void main then uh, sop is system uh, dot out dot print ln this is eventually going to uh, print hello world on the screen so how many lines of code do we have one two three four five six seven okay so we have seven lines of code and then we get the output but here in python we just do what we write one line of code and the work is done that is print hello world hmm. so now what's the process of printing what's the process of running it actually so this is the code we wrote and now we need to run it okay so for java we need to first comp compile it and then execute it hmm. so we have another two lines of command for this whereas in python it's done just by one line of command so in java we write java c space the program uh, the program's name dot java extension then for executing it we need uh, we need to type java space the programming the program now in python we uh, do not need to compile it. it we directly run it using this command which is py space test dot py okay well we can do this in one line of code in java also that is printing that uh, line of code uh, printing hello world on the screen so that can be done using j shell which is uh, uh, java 9 onwards but that is for learning sake only we are not going to use it in production environment that is a live environment but this python's one line code can be used even in the live environment okay so i have one more example now to print the sum of two numbers do we okay now do we need to compile code in python no because python is an interpreted programming language hence we do not need to compile it as its interpreter takes care of it internally okay now we have two things compiler and interpret interpreter so compiler is to do syntax checking mainly which is now 
suppose we go here and this class is mandatory to write okay so this class is a keyword so the spelling of class must be correct okay so if it's not correct it will give us a if you remove one more as it is going to give us a give us an error okay so that work is done by compiler uh, all the checkings then interpreter it's to run the program okay so python interpreter what does it do it does line by line syntax checking and running the program okay so java has an interpreter which is uh, jvm uh, that stands for java virtual machine okay now let's look at the code here so we have this code in java this code in python we type int ab so here we are telling the data type of these two a and b so these two uh, a and b are called variables okay and this int is the data type so every time we need to tell that i want to assign a number to the variable or i want to assign a string so string means a word or a sentence okay so uh, if i write int it means i want to assign a number to it so here i assigned assign 10 to a 20 to b and then i print it sum here hmm? and in python i directly type a equals to 10 b equals to 20 and then i print it here we do not need semicolons okay uh, now why so we see we do not we do not need to specify any data type here why is it so okay why python has no data type like java or c++ because in java c++ we must declare that's the rule okay we must declare the type explicitly that's why they are called statistically typed programming language but in python we do not need to type it explicitly okay we need do not need to type the data type that is here we do not need to add int okay it's auto automatically taken care internally in python hmm? so do we need uh, do we have the data types concept in python okay it's a very interesting question so yes it does have a concept of data types but we do not require to declare the type explicitly as based on our provided value the type will be considered automatically by python okay by the interpreter such types of programming languages are called dynamically type programming language now you see we have got two terms two new terms statistically typed programming language the second one is dynamically type programming language okay so the one we need to tell the compiler prior to compiling that so uh, this is our data type is statistically typed programming language that is java or c++ whereas in python we do not to do it so it's dynamic it's taken care internally now how to find the variable type in python so here i have written a equals 10 and i give this command type brackets a so this will give me the output as integer that means it has detected it's an integer okay now if i write b equals true and i give this command then it will give me boolean as output hmm? now uh, let's uh, look at other dynamically typed programming languages so apart from python we have javascript as a dynamically typed programming language and shell scripting too okay now we can change the value types of variables in uh, to in python means uh, this is something that's not in java okay so if i've written a equals 10 then I, I can immediately write a equals true a equals india or my name okay so i can change the data type so here it's integer here it's string okay so it will still not give an error but if we do the same thing in java it will give an error why because here we need to tell integer uh, the compiler initially what is the data type so if i uh, write integer here then it it must have an integer if suppose instead of 20 i write my name uh, that is a word or a string it's going to give an error okay whereas it's different in python all right so that's the beauty of python that it's simple now we can do such declarations also in python that is i write 
a comma b comma c comma d the, these are all variables and i write equals then 10 comma 20 comma 30 comma 40 so 10 will be assigned to a 20 will be assigned to b 30 will be assigned to c and 40 will be assigned to d now if i print the sum of a b c d i'll get uh, i think 50, uh, 100 sorry yes so that's uh, the simplicity what we have in python whereas this this cannot be done in python okay now okay that's about today's video thank you for watching see you in the next one